What's up everybody, I'm Dr. Garrett Rossi and I am a board certified psychiatrist making mental health content here on YouTube. And if you're new to this community, I would love to make you a subscriber. Come and check out the content that we have here. I think it's super valuable and I think you'll find a lot of interesting topics are covered. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for all the love and support. It does mean a lot to me. What we're going to talk about today is very, very exciting. And it's exciting to me because we're taking something that's been readily available in over-the-counter medications for years, and we're now seeing new applications for the treatment of depression. In this video, I'm going to answer a very interesting question, and that is, can a cough suppressant, a medication that suppresses your cough when you have a cold, treat your depression as well? So let's go ahead and crack right into the video and we're gonna talk all about this. In case you guys aren't aware of what I'm talking about here with the cough suppressant, because there might be other things you're thinking of, I'm talking about the ingredient dextromethorphan. So dextromethorphan, this is a cough suppressant commonly found in things like Robitussin and other cough suppressant agents. So dextromethorphan is getting a lot of play in the world of psychiatry lately. People are very excited about this as a potential therapeutic mechanism or a therapeutic agent, rather. It's primarily marketed as a cough suppressant right now, and also as a mucus-clearing ingredient in over-the-counter cold medications and cough medicines. Now, the primary mechanism of action that we're going to be talking about for depression is that dextromethorphan actually has a really interesting effect on the glutamate system. So we're talking about glutamate here, similar to the way we might be talking about glutamate in ketamine. The primary mechanism of action of dextromethorphan is NMDA antagonism, and there's a few other things that it does too, which I'm going to get to. Now, it's already marketed as a treatment for a neurological disorder. We'll call it a neurological disorder, uh, not a psychiatric disorder, but it's already marketed as a treatment for pseudobulbar affect. And if you saw my video or my talks on the Joker, especially Joaquin Phoenix's Joker rendition in the movie, he had pseudobulbar affect. That was why he was always laughing inappropriately. So it's marketed as a treatment for pseudobulbar affect along with another medication called quinidine. And this medication in combination, dextromethorphan and quinidine together, is called Nudexta. So Nudexta has been around for a while and in a 12-week randomized controlled trial, so again, randomized controlled trial means this is good evidence, they looked at this in people with ALS or Lou Gehrig's disease and multiple sclerosis, so two patient groups, and these individuals all had pseudobulbar affect. They were given a fixed dose of 20 milligrams of dextromethorphan and 10 milligrams of quinidine or placebo, right? This is a randomized controlled trial. And the number of episodes of pseudobulbar affect in the Nudexta group were significantly lower than placebo, and thus this medication gained its FDA approval for the treatment of pseudobulbar affect. So that's how it came about. In the next section of this video, I'm going to talk about the pharmacodynamics and exactly what receptors are being hit, how it's working, and give you guys a better idea of dextromethorphan's overall effects. Dextromethorphan acts on several receptors. I said that the primary mechanism of action that you and I will be talking about here is NMDA receptor antagonism, but there's also alpha-1 activity, so it's going to act on alpha-1 receptors where it stimulates these receptors. So it stimulates alpha-1 receptors. It has serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibition, so just like your regular SNRIs, it's going to increase the availability of serotonin and norepinephrine in the synaptic cleft. It also acts, like I said, as an NMDA receptor antagonist. So there's a few different things that it does. Now, you might be asking me in this new Dexta medication, why is quinidine in there? Like, what the hell's the point of putting quinidine in this medication? What does it do? Well, that's an interesting question. And what quinidine does is it acts as a potent cytochrome P450 2D6 inhibitor. And, you, and some people have said to me, Dr. Hussey, I have no freaking clue what you're talking about. Cytochrome P450s, 2D6 inhibitors, whatever. What you really need to know about this is not so much, you know, cytochrome P450 system, and you probably don't even need to know that it's a 2D6 inhibitor, but what you want to know as, say, somebody looking into this medication as a treatment for uh, pseudobulbar affect, 
or the depression medication that I'm going to talk about in a second, you want to know that dextromethorphan, and especially its active metabolite, has a very short half-life and very poor bioavailability, meaning that it doesn't sit, sit around long enough to actually work on those receptors like the alpha-1, the NMDA receptors, the CERT and uh, NET transporters. It doesn't have enough time to do what it's supposed to do. So what the quinidine does and what bupropion does when we talk about the depression treatment is it enhances the bioavailability of the medication and it makes sure that it sticks around long enough to do what it's supposed to do. So that's the part you need to know. If this was not present, if you didn't use the quinidine, again, dextromethorphan and its active metabolite would be metabolized too rapidly and it wouldn't have enough time to do what it's supposed to do. Let's talk a little bit about adverse effects of Nudexta because that's important, right? All medications have side effects and I'm going to tell you this right now, you heard it here first, even placebo has side effects. Can you believe that? Placebo has side effects? Well, it's true, placebo has side effects. So adverse effects of Nudexta, what are they? Abdominal pain, diarrhea, vomiting, dizziness, prolonged QTC interval on EKG. And people have commented to me also in the comment section, I read them, that they don't know what QTC stands for. And again, really like if you're taking the medication, it's not for you, it's really something more for medical professionals and psychiatrists and doctors who are you know, reading EKGs, like when I have to read an EKG, I have to know what a QTC interval is. For you, you don't necessarily have to know that, just know that if this interval gets too long, you can have an arrhythmia and die. So we do not want you to have a very long QTC as it can cause something called torsades de pointes, which can kill you if you're not careful. So you have to be mindful. Now, again, I don't want to scare everybody. I feel like I'm scaring you guys here with that statement saying that it can kill you. The bottom line is um, you just want to be mindful and maybe have an EKG on file. And of course, if anyone has a history of cardiac disease, you're going to want to get that EKG before you start the medication. So I'm not going to scare you too much, but the reality is this can happen. Other adverse effects can include things like muscle spasms, peripheral edema, so swelling of like your legs, and surprisingly UTI, urinary tract infection. Now, there are some drug interactions that you're going to want to avoid. So you are not going to want to combine dextromethorphan with another 2D6 inhibitor. So you're not going to want to give another potent 2D6 inhibitor. So you're not going to want to give somebody, say, for example, Nudexta with your dextromethorphan and quinidine and add bupropion. That's going to be a problem. So don't add bupropion here. Now, the company that manufactures Nudexta actually attempted to get FDA approval for several other indications. So they looked at agitation associated with dementia. So people with things like Alzheimer's disease often get agitated and there's we're always looking for safe alternatives to atypical antipsychotics for that population. They also looked at diabetic neuropathy. They looked at drug-induced dyskinesias. They looked at migraine headache. The, this company was, was really uh, you know, looking to expand this medication into many different realms. Unfortunately, they ended all of these, most likely because they didn't have positive clinical trial results. So they weren't able to gain FDA approval for any of those other indications that they were seeking. Now to the important part. I'm gonna cover the last piece here, which is there is another new medication that is currently undergoing FDA trials and likely could be FDA approved at any point this year. I wouldn't be surprised if it happens in 2022 or 2023. And that medication is the combination of bupropion with dextromethorphan. So now you're combining bupropion and dextromethorphan together, and this creates this combination drug, drug currently labeled as AXIS-05 or AXS-05. It doesn't have a fancy name yet. It will probably be something complicated that I'll have a hard time pronouncing as usual, but whatever, right? They'll come up with a fancy name that's difficult for us to pronounce. As of right now, this is currently still under investigation. It's currently uh, it's currently being undergoing the process of FDA approval. And you might be saying like, what's the difference between this and Nudexta? Well, bupropion will increase the bioavailability of dextromethorphan by acting as a cytochrome P450 2D6 inhibitor. So the same thing I said before about quinidine, it functions largely in the same way. So it increases active concentrations of the metabolite, the specifically 
dextrofin. So dextrofin is the active metabolite of dextromethorphan, and this is primarily what is being increased when you give a cytochrome P452D6 inhibitor like bupropion. However, the difference here is we're using it to treat depression, and there's synergistic effect of the mechanism of bupropion with dextromethorphan. And you might be saying, Dr. Rossi, what the hell are you talking about? What do you mean synergistic effect with the mechanism? Well, there's some overlap between the things that bupropion does in the body as well as the things that dextromethorphan does. So let's kind of go over those and discuss them. So bupropion has more dopamine and norepinephrine effects. So this is usually called a norepinephrine dopamine reuptake inhibitor, right? which is a little bit different than the medications we've discussed previously. So again, more effect on dopamine, more effect on norepinephrine. Dextromethorphan, on the other hand, has effects at the sigma-1 receptor. So there's some sigma-1 activity. It also, as I said before, acts as a reuptake inhibitor for serotonin and norepinephrine. So again, synergistically, now you have the fabled pharmaceutical company's uh, fabled triple reuptake inhibitor you know, blocking both the dopamine transporter, the serotonin transporter, and the norepinephrine transporter, increasing all of the monoamine neurotransmitters, right? So you, you're achieving that potential goal with this medication combination. And the more, the most interesting one, and the one that's gaining the most attention, like I said, is the effects on the glutamate system. Specifically, dextromethorphan is working, and its active metabolite is working as an NMDA receptor blocker, it's going to block those NMDA receptors and modulate the glutamate activity in the brain. So glutamate is the newest and most exciting target for depression that we're talking about here. To conclude the video, what I can say is that early results are really promising at this point. It looks like a cough suppressant can really be used to treat depression. Now we don't know definitively yet. It hasn't, it hasn't gained FDA approval at this point, but it's really on the verge of gaining FDA approval and will likely be available within the next year or so. So cough suppressant dextromethorphan really does have some antidepressant effects and it works synergistically with bupropion and this combination medication will have some fancy unpronounceable name in the near future and likely be marketed by the pharmaceutical company and uh, prescribed by doctors like myself depending on the circumstances. I would like to see more data on it before prescribing it. Obviously, I think safety is paramount and being careful with these medications is extremely important. We are again playing with fire every time we use a medication of any sort, medical or psychiatric. So we wanna be sure that the science is guiding our decision-making and our choices. I'm going to hold the video there, guys. If you have questions or comments, I would love to see them down below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. It really helps me to know that this material is valuable for you and that we are making things that are changing the view of psychiatry as a field. So thanks again for watching. Take care.